Hello, my name is Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. I have another in-depth video for you today covering the Spitfire Mark V's main plane. As we work our way through, I'll give you extracts from the 1942 Air Ministry Manual and show you my relevant reworked colour AP diagrams. Hope you find this interesting. The Spitfire Mark V's main plane consists of two separate stress skin units of light alloy which are attached to the sides of the fuselage. The underside of the planes being continuous with the underside of the fuselage. Metal covered frieze type ailerons are fitted to the outboard trailing edges of the planes and split trailing edge flaps, pneumatically operated, are fitted between the ailerons and the fuselage. The wingtips are detachable units and house navigation lamps. The main wheel units are attached to the front spars of the planes and fold outwards and upwards into recesses formed in the undersurfaces. For the Spitfire 5A variant, each plane is made to accommodate four Browning .303 inch guns. For the Spitfire 5B variant, accommodation is made in each plane for two Browning .303 inch guns and one Hispano 20mm cannon. The Spitfire 5C variant's main plane is universal and each wing is made to take either of the following four Browning .303 inch guns, two Browning .303 inch guns and one Hispano 20mm cannon or two Hispano 20mm cannons. On early Spitfire Mark V's a pneumatically operated landing lamp is fitted in the bottom surface of the plane. The guns are heated by warm air carried in ducts from the rear of the radiator for the Spitfire 5A and the inner gun bays for the Spitfire 5B and C and from the exhaust manifolds to the outer gun bays of the Spitfire 5B and C. A G42B or G45 camera gun is fitted inside the leading edge of the port plane at the root end. Two oil coolers are mounted in tandem under the port plane and the pressure head is also fitted on the port plane. The starboard plane carries the radiator for the engine cooling system. The basic construction of the main planes consists of two spars and 21 ribs. The front spar being the main spar and the rear spar being an auxiliary. The planes are attached to the fuselage at the main spar where the top and the bottom booms bolt onto the spar formed in the fuselage. And at the auxiliary spar which is bolted to an attachment bracket on the fuselage. The root ends of the planes are fared to the fuselage by metal fillets secured by screws to the main planes and to the fuselage. The main spar and leading edge is constructed as a separate unit to which the main portion of the plane is afterwards assembled. The spar has square section booms with a single plate web at the aft face. The booms are laminated by square section inserts of different lengths so that at the root end the booms are almost solid tapering in thickness towards the tip where they are partly cut away being reduced first to channel section and finally to angle section at the outboard end. The ribs have angle section booms and channel section diagonal members and are bolted to the spar which has stiffness between the booms at the rib positions. At the root end the ribs are close together and reinforcing fittings are provided for the six bolts which secure the undercarriage pin tool mounted on the aft face of the spar. The leading edge skin is in two portions, the top surface and the bottom surface, both being riveted to the ribs and to the spars. Holes are provided in the leading edge of the plane for the gun tunnels, which extend aft through the main spar at the gun positions. 
When the guns are armed and made ready for flight, the holes and tunnels are blanked off by double thickness fabric patches, which are doped over the leading edge, as shown here. The main portion of the plane is built up with an auxiliary spar and ribs, having channel section booms and diagonal bracing members. The root end rib is much stronger than the others. Detachable panels are fitted in the lower surface in way of the outboard browning gun ammunition boxes. The inboard browning guns and ammunition boxes on the Spitfire 5A and to the top surface in way of the Browning and Hispano guns for the 5B. A recess is formed in the undersurface of the plane between ribs 5 and 8 to accommodate the main wheel unit in the retracted position. This recess and a trough for the shock absorber strut are sealed from the interior of the plane. Further spaces are provided between the ribs for the mounting of the guns and landing lamp if fitted. Near the root end of the starboard plane, the undersurface is recessed for the fitting of the radiator, which is surrounded by a fairing to form an air duct. After the radiator, this duct is fitted with a flap, controllable from the cockpit, to cover the flow of air through the duct. At high altitudes, a smaller duct, communicating with the radiator duct, carries hot air from behind the radiator to each of the gun positions in each plane to prevent the guns from freezing up. Two oil coolers are housed in tandem in the port plane and are surrounded by a fairing to form an air duct, this duct being much smaller than that of the radiator and having no flap. The detachable wingtip is secured to the main plane by two bolts, one at each spar, the joint being covered by a metal strip. The main rib and the spar portion of the tip are of metal, but the other ribs and formers are of spruce, the metal skin being secured to them by wood screws. The leading edge of the wing tip houses a navigation lamp. When the aircraft is flown without the wing tips, a fairing is fitted in place of the wing tip. This is for the clipped wing LF low flying variants. The ailerons are of light alloy metal cover construction and are built up as a channel section spar and flange plate ribs. There are double ribs at the two hinge positions. Mass balance is affected by lead weights riveted to the leading edge, one between each pair of ribs between the hinges. Further weights to adjust the mass balance can be assembled on a screwed rod which fits inside a tube in the leading edge between the inboard end rib and the inboard hinge. The split training edge flaps on each plane are in two portions, a main portion and a shorter inboard portion. This construction being necessitated by the sweep up of the undersurface of the plane at the root end, as the two portions of the flaps separate as they are lowered. Both portions have a tubular spar and Z section plate ribs and are covered on one side by a metal skin. The main portion is hinged at main plane ribs 12 and 8 and the short portion is hinged between ribs 2 and 3 and at the inboard end rib. The connecting rod of the flap operating cylinder is connected to the flap by a lever assembly consisting of a hollow lever secured to the flap spar. When the flaps are lowered and the lever moves upwards, a cam formed on it bears against the top skin of the plane and opens a small hinged door to allow full movement of the connecting rod. The door is spring loaded so that it automatically closes when the flap is raised. The flaps are lowered by compressed air, but cannot be raised by this means as movement of the control lever to the up position 
releases the air to the atmosphere. When this occurs, the flaps are raised by the slipstream assisted by a compression spring inside a cylinder that's attached to the rear spar of each plane and to the flap. On the ground, the flaps are raised by these springs alone. Well, that's it for this video. I do hope you found it interesting. We have many more videos lined up for you, including one covering the Spitfire Mark V's wing armament for the A, B and C variants. So look out for that one. Or better still, if you'd like to, please click the free subscribe button below and also like to get notifications when future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.